So uh, I do I do have just something really quick. Uh, I like when I catch small things in the Word. You know, sometimes they have big stories, but sometimes when you read over and over the same scripture, the same uh, verse that you might have read a hundred times, it speaks to new life. And and I saw something in the book of Ruth. And if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Ruth, and we're going to start at chapter one, verse run one. Excuse me, one. I'll get it out there. I do got my cheaters on because I am reading from the Bible. Normally, I print out. And, and it's bigger, but uh, I'm, I'm reading from the Bible, and somebody say, oh, no, he brought his King James. If I bring my King James, they know it's on. <clears throat> so, but uh, let's bow our heads. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for uh, your word, Lord. We thank you for the, the wonderful uh, presence that we feel all the time in your presence, Lord. We, we thank you for it. Your word says your spirit won't always strive with man, but your spirit is here living within us, and we thank you, Lord. Bless the word. Uh, anoint my lips, Lord, and thank you for it in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. 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 Uh, as we get, get closer on Wednesday night, remember the la- starting the last... Uh, Wednesday night of this month, we'll be doing our six-week classes of the heart of God, and we want to uh, really dive in. And, and there's some, you know, some some pamphlets and stuff we'll be passing out pretty soon. But on Wednesday nights, we're going to be uh, talking about the heart of God. How many wants to know the heart of God? Yeah. Well, t- tonight I want to uh, uh, just read read just about the first seven or eight verses and then i want to just elaborate on a few things and then we'll go from there um if you know the story of the book of ruth we preach uh, the book of ruth a lot we preach about the kinsman redeemer we preach about boaz but can we start from the beginning and just read a little bit and uh and, and you know and i like to do what i always like to do somebody say how many knows my favorite saying i don't just read the bible i read the bible uh and sometimes i make up words uh because i, I you know you know <laughs> i stumble through words if i can't pronounce them but it says when it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of bethlehem of judah went to sojourn to the country of moab he and his wife and his two sons now that one verse is so much information and it's so powerful i want to read it again and it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled somebody say when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land how many knows what a famine is it's a drought it's without it's when you don't have uh there was a famine in the land now one thing i want to set up really quick uh, it was when the judges ruled. That means God was still in control, and he had his judges. I, f- I feel like my mom on my arm, but, but, you know, uh, the, the, he had a judge that, that he would, he, they didn't have kings. They had, God would anoint a man, and he would rule over Israel. Now, God was still in control. The judges still ruled, but here there was, there was a famine in the land. Somebody say there was a famine in the land. L- listen, and let's go on a little more. And in a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah, it is not lost on me that the Bethlehem, which means the house of bread, had famine in the land. Somebody said the house of bread was empty. The house of bread was empty. And he took his his wife and, and his two sons and he went to the country of Moab. And the name of this man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife was Naomi. And the name of his two sons was Melion and Chilion. And they went to this Ephratites in uh, Bethlehem and Judah. And when they came into the country of Moab, they continued there. Somebody say they continued there. They got to Moab. They found the place. And they made themselves a home in Moab. And Elimelech and Naomi and Elimelech, Naomi's husband died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. And the name of one was Opa, and the name of the other was Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And then Milion and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. The next few verses, we, if you're familiar with the story, uh, for time's sake, I, I don't want to read it there. And then I want, I want to 
read a couple things and then I want to preach for a minute or two. They were living in the house of bread. We know the story about Naomi said, go home. And Oprah went home, kissed her mother-in-law bye. But Ruth said, no, where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Can I tell you this? Did you ever look in what the name Elimelech means? My God is king. The name of Naomi means pleasant. Do you realize that they were in God's place, in the house of bread, but when there came a famine, God is my king, and pleasant life ceased. And they left God's house, and they went to Moab. If you know anything about Moab, it, it was a pagan country. It wasn't the land of promise. It was somewhere else. Can I tell you there's more uh, of us in that story than you realize? That we in the place where God has called us. But when there seems that a famine, when we're not getting quite what we want, we seem to leave the house of bread and God's house. We seem to leave the pleasant life. God is king and we sojourn to Moab and we go to a place trying to find what we want I started thinking it never in these verses said God said move never said God sent him our brother said he's getting ready to go apparently he has an assignment from the Lord you use that word assignment they wasn't assigned he didn't say go there they went there because they were looking for something can I tell you too many times we try to find what we need we try to find bread in the house of the enemy Moabites would attack Israel time and time and time again does anybody understand where I'm coming from? Why they were there, her husband died. Let me tell you, if you leave God's house and then you go to Moab, and if you stay there any time, the Bible says, Elimelech died. My God is king died. You start living in Moab too long, you start living. See, it was not far away. It was just there. You start riding the fence, and I'm close enough where I know what's going on, but I'm going to live here. It ain't going to take long to God as my king dies. And there is a king in our life at some point. We all serve. How many know that? Oh, Don Francisco, so now I'm showing my age there. You got to serve somebody. You're going to have kings somewhere. Somebody is going to be the king. Somebody is going to sit on the altar of your life. Yes. But the first thing that happened when they left God's house is my God is king died. My God is king died. This kind of uh, took me for uh, a little surprise. Milion and Chilion, if you look at the, 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 na the words are related to the words sick and mortality. That kind of, they left God's house and then their sons were named sick and mortality and then they died. And that left Naomi all alone. I wonder if Elimelech ever thought about, when we leave here, what happens to me? Men, as men, we should be thinking about our family. We should be thinking what's next. And as we lead them, are we leading them into righteousness? Are we leading them into truth? But what happens? Why they were there, her, the son took two, da uh, two wives, two daughters-in-law. Oprah left. But let me tell you this, and like I said, this is just a small little message tonight, and I hope it encourages you. Uh, in Moab, when it was all alone, and they were all alone, they all, uh, uh, Ruth said, I'm not going to leave. Your God will be my God. And you want to know what, uh, this was co pretty cool. Ruth's name means friendship. Let me tell you, God has somebody. If you have moved, if, you, if you're watching online, or if you have gone off course and you might feel like you're living in Moab because you didn't find what you wanted in the house of God, let me tell you, God has somebody there. And if you read the rest of the story, uh, Ruth went with Naomi hand in hand, and guess what? They went back to the land of promise. 
started thinking about all the times in my life where I left the will of God, where I knew God had placed me because I wanted to do my thing. You know, or, or maybe, maybe we, 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 we want to, we want to be like, uh, you know, we want to just date Moab. Remember what I said Sunday morning? Some of us want to, want to, uh, want to flirt to convert. You know what I'm saying? Come on. So, so we want to just date Moab. You know, she didn't, she didn't go to Egypt. They, they didn't go to Africa somewhere. They went right there. But why did we leave the house of God? Why don't we realize that he's in control? The fact that it started out in the times where the judges ruled, God would choose a judge. Yeah. There, was, there was no um, council to choose a judge. There was no hierarchy. God, that God would just, can you imagine this? God sent me here. But the first thing to go in the story was God is my king. And then it got so bad that that root said that Naomi said, "Hey, I don't even want to be called pleasant anymore." She changed her name because she didn't want to be pleasant anymore. She says, "Cause God, God had dealt harshly with me." Do we feel that way sometimes? But because of time's sake, I'm not going to read all the chapters. But if you begin to read. At the end of chapter one, they arrived. Can I, can I just read it just a little bit? Ruth said in verse 16, Entreat me not to leave or to return from the following after thee. From following after thee. Because where you go, I will go. Where you live, lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God will be my God. And where you die, I will die. And where you are buried, they will bury. I'm telling you, God has connections in this life that sometimes when you meet somebody and God, and guess what? We, we're together for life. And, and she says, wherever you go, I'm going to go. But what she didn't know, what God, what Naomi didn't understand is that God had put a connection in her life. And, and through Ruth, she was going to do great things. Can I, I'm going to keep reading. I'm getting sidetracked here. In verse 19, it says, So they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they had come to Bethlehem and all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto him, Call me not Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty hath dwelt bitterly with them. Mara means, means actually it means bitter. And, you know, because it was, it was at Marah that the Israelites found bitter water when they left Egypt. She says, I, was, I left here pleasant, but living in the lands, land of the Irami has made me bitter. How many bitter people we meet on Sunday morning in service? We had two daughters that were, that, that were, y'all too quiet tonight. And there's my, we had two daughters that were waitresses. And you want to know the crowd that waitresses hate? The church crowd on Sunday. Because they tip the less and they rude. They're bitter. They become bitter. And so many times there's bitter People sitting in the house of God. Why? But when we don't understand it, and they were like, is this Naomi? Is this pleasant Naomi? And she's called me Mari. She says, because I've been bitter. Can I tell you, living in the land of Moab will make you bitter. Amen. But something, and I'm, and, and, and I'm going to paraphrase a lot of it for time's sake. Uh, but all of a sudden, God opened the door for Ruth. All of a sudden, uh, somebody caught Ruth's eye, uh, uh, Boaz's eye. Ruth, she caught someone's eye. Let me say it correctly. And sing, all you single ladies, all it takes is, is God can send 
your Boaz to ca- for you to catch their eye. You don't have to go looking. She was she was she wasn't halfway dressed. She wasn't trying to 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 to, to, to put some bait on the hook. She was in the field gleaming. She was she was, was worrying about her work. And he said, "Who is that?" There's something about her there. I see something of worth in her. Long story short, she found out, wait a minute, Naomi said, that's Boaz. He's our family. He's our kinsman redeemer. Long story short, at the end, God took what all the mess up that, uh, that, that Naomi and her husband had done and lost her wives. God put her right there. Back where she belonged in Bethlehem. And she raised the lineage of Jesus. David came from that bloodline. Solomon came from the bloodline. So what I'm telling you is, guess what? A mistake doesn't end things when God's involved. A mistake. You might have messed up, but guess what? He has the plan way back. But what she did is the two came back to Bethlehem. They came back to the place where they belong. If you have moved, if you have gone in a place where God is not, and you know God's not, please, it's so easy. Just come back. If you're watching online and you may have backslide, just come back. Guess what? That's still bread in Bethlehem. It might seem like a famine. Sometimes I come to church. I don't feel God. It don't seem like nothing's going on. But I know if I just keep coming back, if I know I just keep hitting my knees, there is bread. There always will be bread when the house of the Lord. This morning, I didn't feel nothing in prayer. But guess what? I'm not leaving, Jesse. I'm coming back because I know he's going to meet me there. Then we go through seasons where it's quiet. It is a famine. It seems like the heaven is brass. How many Christians want to quote? It seems like I, my prayers ain't getting through. Can I tell you, there is bread. There is bread. All you got to do, just, just keep on. Just keep on. Just keep on. Pastor Blades is going to be with us Sunday morning. He told me 40 years ago, God said, if you meet me every morning at the same place, And at the same time, he says, I'm going to meet you. And he said, God spoke to him and said, it's going to take some time. I've been knowing Pastor Blaze probably 20 years now. I've preached at his church many a times there in Clarkdale, Mississippi. And there is a dent on the pew. Because he's old school. He's old school. And uh, uh, he's not going to like the lights. And, you know, he's going to fuss about it. Well, you're going to see... He still has one of those big pulpits. You know, you really get ready to preach when you got these big wooden things. And, and so, and uh, he told me the other day, he says, Chad, it's been 40-something years every morning. He says, I'm at the church at 5. And he says, this past couple years doing COVID, he says, something's changed. He says, there's not a day that goes by. I don't feel the manifested presence of God. And he says, it, is, it has changed me. It has changed me. But he still likes Bob Dylan. I ain't figured. I'm like, Lord, you need to change his music taste. And he's the only preacher I know that was at Woodstock. That, that, that's my favorite story that, that uh, I tell everybody. He gets mad when I tell people that. Because it's true. And, but he says what God has done. He said he's opening up revelation. What I'm telling you is, come back. There's bread. In Bethlehem. All they had to do was come back. All they had to do was just show up. And God did the rest. Ruth went out and Naomi just stayed home. I don't know. I guess she was too old or or, or too bitter. I don't know. But guess what? God used Ruth to do all the work. I'm like, Lord, I need something like that. It seems like I'm doing everything around this place. Lord, I need somebody to just do all the work. But what I'm trying to tell you is he was still God. The same God during the famine was the same God 10 years later when they returned. What changed their position? 
See, what, 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 what Naomi did was her and her husband, they, they changed their position. And what, what's, what, what, what I didn't understand, and, and I guess Elimelech and Naomi decided to do something, what it affected their family. Why they were there, their two sons died. Men and women, as we follow Christ, our family follows, our children follow. Let us make sure we are hearing the word. That way, when we begin to shepherd our family, we don't live them to a place. Do you realize these two guys, and I, they, they, I don't know if they, they, they loved God or, you know, there was a law that says don't marry strange women. God says marry in the tribe. He wanted, he didn't want to marry. He didn't want to mix. But, but, the, but there's funny how God used that. And, and, and I'm like, man, I'm like, how did God take a strange, a stranger into the lineage of Jesus? There's only two women and, and, and we, we know there's Rahab the harlot and then there's Ruth that, that when they, when they talk about the lineage, there's only, there's only two, so they have to be pretty special. And, I, and I'm like, Man, how you took disobedience and then you brought like this beautiful thing out of it. And then I'm like, what, what, what happened? Can I tell you, I read it. Did you catch it? When she says, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. What she said, I renounce where I'm from. I renounce everything. All I know is your God will be my God. Oh, so tonight, that's what I want. I just renounce everything, and I just want God. Yes. I just want God. Yes. And I wonder if, the, if the, the, the zeal of Ruth didn't do something to Naomi. Wait a minute. I be, I'm trusting God. I believe God. So I want to encourage you tonight. I said it was really simple tonight, but I just want to encourage you that it's not over until God says... It's not over until the Lord says it. Come on, somebody say it's not over. How long has it been? Two months, six weeks? Tracy, how long? Two months ago, I prayed for her in ICU. And how long they gave her? Two days? They gave her two weeks. And then we went in there. She was uh, unconscious. They said her body was shutting down. I went in there to pray and, and, and with Sister Shirley. Uh, uh, Sister Shirley's sick, if you didn't know. That's why she's not here. My wife's not here. So, so we went in there and I got in the bed and I told Tracy, I said, I got a peace. I said, I feel like this ain't the end, but we're going to pray. And that was the Sunday. And the Wednesday she woke up. So don't, it's not over till God says it's over. Come on, we need to start believing. If we would start believing all this stuff, I wish Naomi, before they left, they would have pulled out the scriptures and start reading faith on what God can do. If it seems like it's famine, if it seems like it's empty, man, so open up the book of bread and you're going to find him there. You don't have to run. You don't have to move. You don't have to go way over there. Everybody wants to run away. When things go wrong, you don't have to go nowhere. You got to get in that book and watch God do the rest. Because it ain't over till God says it's over. And I'll stop. I'll close the Bible so I don't get worked up again. So anybody knows we've been trying to build a, uh, Brother Ed, we've been trying to build a new church for almost five years now. We, we have 18 acres just north of town. <clears throat> and, every, and every Sunday I come into this little building and and we 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 worship in other people's armpits because we you know it's it's packed here on Sunday we don't we can't park and we can't do anything. Praise the Lord! I don't want it any other way in this building. I don't want it empty. We've been there, and I've been praying. And I I got this guy to come look to come do some work on the land. And he and he said, and I knew in seventeen I, I stepped on on the, that land and God spoke to me and said this is the place. And, and the guy I was with, I said, this is, this is the place. God said, this is the place. And me and that, the owner, that lady, we argued for two years, two years, two years. Well, I finally bought it because I, because I was scared. I bought just the front property, uh, the first six acres. And I walked in, I talked, trying, trying to get this canal thing fixed. And this guy looked at me straight and he just said, um, this is trash land. You really, what you need to do is just sell it and go. Uh, he got me mad. You know, but I couldn't say nothing because he was on the drainage board. 
So if I, got, if I said, you know, you got to learn a little bit, if, if I told him, you know, to take a hike, and I said, well, I'm sorry you feel that way, sir. I, I happen to disagree. You know, I think this is where God has called us, and it's okay. I don't mind taking the trash land because I know God can do something great. So, uh, <clears throat> but, but what I've been doing on that thing for the last almost five years we finally built the house you know we working on the prayer area we we, we got our shot we, we were getting things ready but if i if i don't watch it because it doesn't seem like we have what it we need you know you know we you know with with inflation everybody knows it added a million on the project so i paused it because i i'm not begging for money i'm not begging y'all for money every you know y'all don't y'all don't want that either and and so but but if i don't watch it I want to get discouraged and just move on. And you know, I've tried to win every building in this town. I've tried, we tried to buy the Catholic play. We tried to buy everything and God keeps shutting it down. And if I do, if I wouldn't be hearing from God, it would be easy to say, well, let's just go Lafayette or let's just go somewhere else. But then see, I would be moving out of what God spoke, moving out of where God has called us, out of where God has sent us but one thing i learned from that story is that god has a plan and that when it looks like there's nothing don't give up because god has it all worked out if he can make water come from a rock if he can have the people wake up and there's there's bread there's manna if he can have quails, if he can, his disciples, when they went fishing, they didn't come back empty. That needs to be a whole, I can preach that another. When his disciples went fishing, guess what? The nets busted, the boat was full. Guess what? Jesus don't send us fishing to come back with empty nets. If he is called, if he tells you where to fish, you better fish on the right side of the boat. I'm not Lord. I'm getting out. I'm getting out of there. If, if they, when they fish where he said fish, the nets were busting out. So my new thing is when I talk to a pastor and they're like, man, we running out the other side, cast your nets on the other side, on the other side where the drug addicts are, where the other side, where the prostitutes are. The other side where, where people's got earrings and, and tattoos and alcoholic. You need to cast your set on the other side. Because that's what he's trying to pull in. Some do and some's like, no, I'm good. When he goes, how did I get on that? I don't know. But what I'm saying is, there's plenty where the Lord's at. Think about it. They left because of a famine. They served Jehovah. Jesus made bread where there wasn't no bread. Five loaves of bread. Boom. Two fishes. Fed thousands. He told them, fish on the other side, read the story. When they got back, he already had fish. Grilling. I don't know how that happened. He probably just said, whoop, and he just jumped on the fire. Thank you. <laughs> or the water threw him out. Yep, we're going to live. Listen to you again, sir. What I'm trying to tell you is the devil tries to tell us that there's a famine. They're going to try to tell you that there's a famine in your present church. The other night, and, and I'm, and I'm going to stop. We, when we had the, the group from Bethel went down and... Um, one girl, and I, and I, and I, and I overheard it because I was there, and she, she was a worship leader in town, and she was, with, she was talking to the other girl, and she said, I feel it's time to move. I don't know what to do, but I think it's time God's moving me. And I'm curious what, what the student was going to tell her. And I never heard such wisdom in a young person in all my life. She says, has God told you where to go? And she said, No. She says, then you stay until you get the word from the Lord. She said, where are you going to go to? The girl said, I don't know. She said, exactly. What I'm trying to tell you is God has all we need. There's no famine. Because it's funny how then Naomi heard that, that, that in Bethlehem there's bread again. 
Sometimes the Lord will hold back his hand because he's testing us. Because he's testing to see if we're going to trust him and if we're going to be obedient. Oh, and it ain't in the story because I, I don't read the Bible. I read the Bible. I can only imagine when Ruth got there. And maybe things got a little, a little lack and Ruth said, no, 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 boys. Can, can I tell you the story about when grandma and, and grandpa, when, when they, when they, when it got a little lack, they left. And guess what? It, it didn't happen. We're going to stay right here and believe God. We've seen God. We need to be talking to our children and we believe God and we have sent God. <laughs> so I want to ask you a question. Have you been living in Moab? If you have, it's time to come back to the house of bread. It's time to come back and watch God do a miracle. He don't even do a miracle because he didn't even hear this was just random girl. Her husband died. She decides that she was going to uh, take care of her mother-in-law. Probably she was going to, I'm going to be an old maid. I don't care about, you know, you know, I'm never going to marry again. I'm just going to do my thing. And then all of a sudden, God just didn't have a good looking man. He had a good looking rich man. A good-looking rich man with a lot of power and clout. And God says, no, he's got all the bread you need, honey. You ain't never going to lack for that again. You realize when God has a plan, and this was a whole other message, and if you were here a few years ago, uh, you, 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 you've heard me preach it before, but when she went, she went to the corners of the field because that's where the poor that was the law that, Mo, that God told Moses, let, let the poor eat of the corners. You had the leftovers. Just They couldn't cut the corners. That was for the poor. That was for the poor. Well, she started off in the corner. And then just not long later, she owned the field. Because she was faithful to her mother-in-law and to God. So I want to encourage you, no matter where you're at, Stay where God has planted you. Stay where God has put you. If you want to, if you feel like it's time for another job, stay until God opens that door. And you will not regret it because God is doing great things. Let's bow our heads. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, I, I thank you for the life that it brings. Lord, to thank you for, Lord, the, 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 the encouragement that this story has brought me today. Lord, I give you all the honor and all the glory. We thank you for it and praise you for it in Jesus' name. And the church said.